are live from ACK St. Philip's Jericho, the church where we belong. I want to welcome all of us, our viewers, wherever you are. Join us in this service as we glorify the Lord, as we worship him, as we seek his face. We are grateful that you are there watching. We are happy that you are there listening to us. And it is beyond our ability because it is amazing grace of God that we are here. I want us to just thank God as we go before the Lord, as we begin with our God, as we begin with prayer, and we thank God for everything. He tells us that we should be grateful at all seasons, in season and out of season. Therefore, we are happy, even a time like this, as we welcome you to progress with us, to advance with us, ride on with us as we continue even uh, worshiping God and also hearing from him. Let us pray as we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Father, that is the prayer that we are making. It is a plea, O oh Lord, that we have shortcomings, we have weaknesses, we are limited, O oh Lord, in whatever we do. And that is why we are seeking you so that you can come. Let your kingdom overwhelm us in this place. Thank you, Father, because of preparing us for this time so that we can worship you in songs, so that we can hear from you, so that you can encourage us, inspire us, and also rebuke us, and show us your ways, O oh Lord, in love. Thanking you because of each and every person who is there listening to us and watching us. Father, we pray blessing in abundance so that you can give them a testimony to speak about your goodness, to sing about your love, and to testify about your amazing grace. Thanking you, Father, even as you encourage us to seek you amidst the challenges and temptations of this journey of faith. We bless you and we worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brethren, we are going to sing as we worship God by singing hymn number 31 from the Golden Bells. 31 from the golden bells, that is the small, the small books, and the big books, item number 33. Song number 33, Come Ye That Loved the Lord. We want to show God that we love him as we come together so that we can offer this sacrifice of song as we give to him. Come he that love the Lord, and let your joys be known. Join in a song with sweet accord. Join in a song with sweet accord. And as I Round the throne and the Sarah, the throne. We are marching, we are marching to Zion. Beautiful, beautiful Zion. We are marching up to Zion, the beautiful city of God. Let those refuse to sing, nor ever knew a God. But children of the heavenly King, the children of the heavenly King, speak the joys abroad, may speak the joys abroad. 
we are marching, we are marching to Zion. Beautiful, beautiful Zion. We are marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. The love Zion in a thousand sacrifices before we reach the heavenly field, before we reach the heavenly field, who oh, walk the golden streets and walk the golden streets. We are marching. Oh, yeah. oh yes, beautiful Zion. We are marching up to Zion, the beautiful city of God. And let our songs abound and every tear be dry. Oh, we are marching through Emmanuel's ground. We are marching through Emmanuel's ground. Who fear was on high to fear as well. Oh, 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 we are marching, we are marching to Zion. Beautiful, beautiful Zion. We are marching upward to Zion. Yon the beautiful city of God. We may have our seats. The scripture reading comes from the New Testament, the epistle of Paul to the Romans, chapter 5, starting to read from verse 1 to verse 5. The epistle of Paul to the Romans, chapter 5, starting to read from verse 1 to verse 5. The title of that text is, Faith Brings Joy. And I am reading using the New Living Translation. Therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ our Lord has done for us. Because of our faith, Christ has brought us into the place of undeserved privilege where we now stand and we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. We can rejoice, too, when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance, and endurance develops strength of character, and character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. And this hope will not lead to disappointment, for we know how dearly God loves us, because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. And this is the word of God. We want to hear the word of God as expound to us by Dr. Isaac Fundi. Dr. Isaac Fundi is the chairman of the young couple in our church. Dr. Fundi holds the, a very key position also in the welfare, Good Samaritan Kit, where he is our coordinator. 
Dr. Fundi is also part of the offertory team that is led by our mom, Pamela Shitandi. Dr. Fundi, apart from all those qualifications that he uses to serve the Lord with, is well endowed with intellectual capacity where he holds the PhD in mechanical engineering and he lectures at Jomo Kenyatta University. We are grateful that God is using him in a very special manner, even to expand his kingdom and to invite him. We are going to arise and sing him number 316 from the big books, Golden Bells, and small books, 290. My hope is built on nothing less, going in tandem with the reading of the day. Built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust thy sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When darkness seems to veil his face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every heart and stormy jail, my anchor holds with the head. Oh, on Christ the solely rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. His oath is called and blood. Support me in the whelming flood. When all around my soul gives way, if then is all my hope Oh, oh, spread the soul in rock I stand. Jehovah God, that is our prayer and it is our desire that it is you who is our solid rock that we stand this morning. All other ground is soft sinking ground and sand, but in you we find a stable position. And so Lord, we come that you may speak to us, you may teach us, O oh Lord, and that you may rebuke us. We pray that you may make us, O oh my Father, to be a sons and daughters in your kingdom who are ready to be taught of you. We bless you and we honor you, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. May we have our seats. I want to greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This good morning that the Lord has given unto us. I want to appreciate so much the canon and the leadership of St. Philip's Jericho for this wonderful opportunity that I've been given to share the word of the Lord at a time like this. My brothers, my sisters, my parents, I want to praise the Lord because of you and because of such a wonderful and gracious moment that you have been given. As we have been read this morning, we are going to share from the book of Romans, chapter number five, 
reading from verse number one to verse number five, and also referring to other number of scriptures. And uh, looking at that passage that has been read to us clearly, I then suggest a title for our sharing this morning. That our title be, A Sure Hope Patiently Experienced Through Challenges. Praise be to the Lord. Brethren, we are often faced with challenges and trying moments in life. We are faced with overwhelming challenges as we go through this life. However, our response to all of these kind of challenges is key to all how we are going to react to them. We can either choose to stay confident as we face them or as we come across each and every kind of adversary or each and every kind of challenges and then we turn them to be opportunities or we just decide to live in tribulations, in trials, or in distress. These tribulations can be in terms of like now what you're facing. We will be thinking, how are we going to settle our bills that they never stop coming our way? Are there trials that possibly we are going to be laid off? Are we in distress that possibly we are wondering how are we going to meet and supply to the needs of our families? All these are crises. All these are tribulations as Paul puts it very clearly when he was writing to Romans in this part of chapter number five of the passage that you have read. However, we realize through this crisis as we go through them, and I'll be insisting that you are going through them, through these crises that you are going through, every time we face them, they make our faith to grow. Praise be to the Lord. And so we will look at three things out of this passage. The Bible records in this part that our suffering as we go through these trials, it produces patience. So two things there. That suffering leads to production of patience. In verse number three of the passage that we have read, Paul indicates it very clearly that suffering produces patience. In other versions of the Bible says that it produces perseverance. Now, patience is a virtue. It is a virtue that makes one to evaluate or to go through discomfort without complaining. Now, it is that kind of a virtue that makes you to go through. The Bible says you'll go through fires. So you go through it, though, yes, it is a discomfort, but you go through it without complaining. You may complain, as you're going to see, but with the clear target of the part that where you want to complain. Patience it is waiting without complaining. You wait, but as you wait, you don't complain in the situation. Not that the situation is not uncomfortable. The situation can be very uncomfortable to your life. But you choose not to complain to the wrong target. You complain and take your complaint to the right target. Now, going through the situation with the right perception, now here, perception is how you view things, how you view the situation, how you make good out of it. It makes us to get the best out of that situation. And therefore, we turn the situation to a great opportunity. Now, complaints has two ways. One, it can either draw out of us the energy that makes us to drive and meet and change the situations to opportunities. But on the other side, it makes our discomfort to be known. So yes, we can complain. But then how or what does the Bible say when you want to complain? The psalmist 
in the book of Psalm, chapter number 142, verse number 2, he clearly knows and appreciates that we are human beings. We have a tendency that we have to ventilate out. And so in this part of Psalm, chapter number 142, verse number 2, it says, I pour out my complaints before him. Before him, I tell my trouble. The him that is referred here, it is the Lord our God. And so I ask you, my brother and my sister and my father and my mother, to whom do you tell your troubles? When you are complaining, do you complain to your fellow men? Do you complain to other situations? Or do you take your complaints to him who is able? He says, I am who I am. He is our God. He knows our end from the beginning. And so we are supposed to take our troubles to him. And therefore, finally on this first part, while we're exercising this patience, two things are of cardinal. Number one, if then we are going to patiently walk through the challenges and turn them to opportunities, the first thing is refuse the counsel of evil men. Now we all know about the story of Job, I mean of Job in the Bible. Job was a man who was wealthy during his time. And when Job lost everything, he accepted that God had a plan. He decided to patiently wait on God to reveal the plan that he was to save him. And sure enough, he refused to give in to the pressure of denying God. The reality of the situation at that time was that Job was passing through a storm. Yes, Job had all the reasons to complain to God. Job had all the reasons to listen to his three friends, to his wife, and the children maybe. But he chose. He said, I will not complain. He said, I will not bow down to their pressure. But he chose to patiently wait and direct all his strength to the Lord Almighty. So number one thing, refuse the counsel of evil men. Number two, as we patiently wait and go through the challenges, we should devote to God's work while we are waiting. Now, where am I referring to? I'm referring to the book of Luke, chapter number 2, verse 25. Again, in this portion of the scripture, we find a man by the name Simeon, an old man, who had a promise that was shared to him. And he was promised that he's not going to die until he sees the Messiah. While waiting patiently, Simeon chose to see his fulfillment of this promise by devoting himself in doing what is required of him. So, the next thing, therefore, is patiently, we are told, produces character. Now, someone said that you cannot swim in a dry land. After you have swam, then through that patiently and teaching yourself, character develops. So patience brings out in us a proved fact of God's power and love through deliverance, through the trials that we are facing. Therefore, patience is a sum of practical wisdom taught to us by the events of life. As you go through the events of life, many things are taught to us. Sometimes they may not be taught to us through our parents, neither in the education system, but you learn them through the practical experiences of life. Now, in the book of Genesis, chapter number 30, verse 25 to 31, we read briefly about the story of Jacob. Jacob, after getting his father's blessings, 
he chose to run to a place called Padan Aram. And this is where he stayed at uh, Laban's place. Now, while at that place, Jacob developed a character. Jacob was one man before he had ran away from his father's place. He was one man who could not be trusted. He could easily steal his brother's birthright. But when he went to Padan Aram or to Laban's farm, he started working as he also waited, you know, for the desires of his heart. Jacob wanted to marry Rachel, but he was tested and his character was changed. As he was having a new character through patience, you know, then verse number 27 of this portion makes Laban to testify. Laban says that, you know, if I just quote that part, if I have found favor in your eyes, please stay. I have learned by experience or by divination that the Lord blessed me because of you. Now, it was the experience that Laban and Jacob went through that made them to realize that whatever they had, there were blessings that were coming from the Lord. And therefore, experience teaches us to incline to our Lord Jesus Christ. However, experience of adversaries without Christ being in the center of it, it is a punishment, my brothers. It is a punishment because we will not be having the person to take us through. Just think of Peter and the company as recorded in the book of John chapter number 21, verse 1 to 6. Now, Peter had a very great experience. He was an experienced fisherman. But when it comes to this part of John chapter number 21, verse 1 to 6, we find that he suffered even with all massive experience that he has gathered or he had gathered through fishing. At the end of the day, in that morning, they caught nothing. It was just like a punishment, even with that experience. So he experienced nothing, or his experience at that point, as the song has said, it was just loose soil. It was sinking sand until he followed the instructions of our Lord Jesus Christ, and then they yielded to what Christ said. Finally, as I conclude, character or experience produces hope. It is this hope that we rely on as Christians. Referring back to Peter and company, or and the others, Peter, while they were at the shore of the Sea of Tiberias, as it is recorded, after spending all the night fishing, trying to get fish, they must have had an awful experience. This, I believe, could have led them to despair. And that is what sometimes experience can make us go through. That we despair in the opportunities. We despair as we go through challenging moments. We despair in life. But the Bible encourages us that the experience that we are gaining produces hope in us. This could have led them to despair at that point until Christ showed up in their lives. And therefore, Christians, experience without Christ may lead us nowhere, even as we say we are going through the challenges. Therefore, my brothers and my sisters, my fathers and my mothers, desiring something good in the future, it makes us to be energized. It makes us to expect it to happen. And it makes us to go through these challenging times, through patiently being taught through the experiences, but creating in us a hope that is undying, a hope that is assured of us, a hope that Christ is always on our side. May the Lord bless you and do you good. Let us pray.
Father God, we thank you because of your teaching this morning. We pray that as we go through the challenging times of our lives, you may show your mighty and able hand. Carry us through them, Jehovah. Teach us through them and create in us an experience to love you, to honor you, and raising our hopes as we wait for your second coming. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Fundi. We want to stand on those promises as we invoke the name of the Lord. We want to remind our God that uh, he's the one who promised that he's not going to leave us, he's not going to forsake us. And because he's a God who does not change, we want to remind him that he must implement what he began so that he can execute it to the latter because he promised us so. And therefore, we want to stand on those promises even as we prepare to give thanks to God and to worship him with our possession as we give him thanks, offering, and also give him what is due to him, that is tithe. In case you want to support the work of God and the activities that are going on in this church, you can send us through our pay bill number. Our pay bill number, 734618. Pay bill number, you go to business number, and you will write 734618, and then account number can either be your name or tithe or offering or any other item you like to write. But remember, the pay bill number, which is the business number, is 734618. As we stand on the promises, we have a lot that we need to give thanks to. Thanks for. God has given us life. God has given us strength. God has given us even health that others who are more healthier than us are not more. But by the grace of God, we are still alive and others are not even able to hear and receive such messages of hope. But you and me, we are privileged. We want to stand so that we can sing hymn number 297 from the big books and 272 standing on the promises of Christ my King as we give thanksgiving to God through offertory. And remember, we want to support the work of God and God will bless you. Pay bill number is 734618. Standing on the promises of Christ, my King. Promises of Christ, my King. Through eternal ages, His lives is ring. Glory to the highest, I will shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing, I am standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises of our Lord. When the holy storms of doubt and fear are said, by the living water of God I shall prevail. Standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God my Savior. Standing, standing, I am standing on the promises of God. 
Standing on the promises I now can see. Perfect present cleansing in the blood for me. Standing in the liberty where Christ makes free. Standing on the promises of God. Hallelujah. Standing, standing. Standing on the promises of God my Savior. Standing, standing, I am standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises of Christ the Lord, bound to Him eternal be by last stronghold. Overcoming daily with the Spirit's sword, standing on the promises of God, hallelujah, standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing, standing. I am standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises I cannot fail. Listening every moment to the Spirit's call. Resting in my Savior as my all in all. Standing on the promises of God. Hallelujah. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing, I am standing on the promises of God. Let's pray. Our Lord and Savior, we come to thee this morning. As we finish, you have, we have seen you, we have heard from you, we have sung for you. Receive our blessings, dear Lord Jesus. Provide for our needs this week. Provide for our good health as we live, as we depart. And may the grace that passes all understanding be upon us from now and forevermore. Lord, we thank you for the week. We thank you for this other week that is coming. We thank you for everything that you have done unto us. We give all the glory and the honor. May your name be lifted high. We thank you again through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Friends, we are so ever grateful because of working together with us and supporting us in different ways. I am very sure and I'm confident that quite a number of us are praying for us and praying for the church and praying for the government and also praying for the front soldiers who are dealing with pandemic, this pandemic, the medical personnel. Brethren, it is high time that we re-engineer ourselves as we commit the government before the Lord so that the decision they are going to come up with in relation to the reopening of our churches, the decision is going to be guided by the wisdom that comes from the Holy Spirit and also God's intervention is going to give them new thoughts on how they are going to handle the society. I want to thank you so much for the support those who have been giving materially for the need in this church. 
those who have been sending their money and using the pay bill number, I'm so much ever grateful. I want to thank the pastoral team who have always been there giving the word and praying so that they can be able to reach out to our members who are currently not coming to church. I want to thank the media team unreservedly for the commitment, devotion, and also for this special calling they have in ensuring that the word of God is not limited within the walls of St. Philip's, but reaches you where you are seated in your houses and also with your families. I want to thank each and every person who is committed to serving the Lord and remaining faithful to the calling. Brethren, I'm so much ever grateful because of that. The person who was on the driving seat today this morning is Reverend Canon Festus Madere, and Festus loves you so much. Wherever you are, may God bless you. Brothers and sisters, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly on you and give you peace. And the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you, remain with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. We shall sing the recessional hymn, recessional hymn coming from Golden Bells once again, the big books, 164. 164 and the small books 146. 164 and 146. What can wash away my stain? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Wash away my stain. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my cleansing this I see. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my pardon this my plea. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is that blood that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing can force in at all. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Not of good that I have done. Nothing but the blood.